Hey, everybody. I have a really interesting study to share with you today. A brand new study. Let me pull up the slides. <laughs> it just came out, just got published. Everybody's losing it over this. Um, and it appears that depression and um, de depression in vegetarians and um, vegan dieters is twice as prevalent. That's right. This is the actual article. It was published in the Journal of Affective Disorders, literally just came out. And um, they report that vegetarianism appears to be associated with a high prevalence of depressive episodes, especially twice as much. And, um, and they say that individuals who excluded meat from their diet were found to have a higher prevalence of depressive episodes. And importantly, this association is independent of socioeconomic lifestyle factors and nutrient deficiencies. So what could actually be the cause? Oh, before that, the results, this is from the actual article that I showed you. So this is what they say. Meat non-consumers experienced approximately twice the frequency of depressive episodes of meat consumers. This is staggering results. It should be headline news because most nutritional epidemiology tends to be headline news when it's trying to scare us away from red meat. So this also should be a headline news. So what could potentially be the causes? There are a lot of nutrients that are generally not looked at in nutrition um, because they're not a vitamin or a mineral, but that are very important and more and more we're realizing just how crucial they are. Uh, I forgot actually to add also collagen here. So we'll start with collagen. Um, it's almost efficient in our modern diet. So that's huge. Taurine, creatine, carnosine, carnitine. Those are all incredibly important nutrients found in some cases almost exclusively in red meat. I have another video that I'll post in uh, the description box below that I had filmed earlier about how red meat is a superfood. And I link and I talk about all of these chemicals and nutrients in more detail. So you may want to check that out. So the fact that you're not getting enough of those nutrients on a vegan or vegetarian diet could potentially be the cause. Another thing is when nutrition researchers are looking at, let's say, protein um, content of, let's say, a vegan diet versus a meat-containing uh, con diet, they're going to look at the just um, nutrient database numbers of like total protein content, how many grams of protein is in this vegetarian diet versus how many grams of protein is in this meat-containing diet. What they fail to accommodate for or look for is the fact that when you're eating protein from a plant-based source, you're also getting the protein digestive enzyme inhibitors. Those are plant self-defense chemicals that are also found in plants that are designed to prevent you, the animal, from actually making use of that nutrition and that protein. They don't, that, pro, that plant doesn't want to be eaten. And so it makes sure you cannot really get the nutrition you need from eating it. And so this is why um, uh, they might say, well, we don't understand why this is happening. It's because they're not looking really closely enough into all the other factors found in plants. It's not just absolute amount or total gram amounts of protein. Another thing that is uh, that could potentially be causing the depression and increasing the prevalence of depression might be the anti-nutrients. There are tons of anti-nutrients that block um, nutrition, nutrient absorption. I should have said here nutrient absorption. So even though, again, on paper, it might say that you have these B vitamins and all of those, let's say any kind of vitamin, right? It's like, oh, we have all of these vitamins found in those plants. What they don't pay attention to is also, again, you have things like tannins and phytic acid or phytates, um, oxalates. All of those chemicals are also are like guided missile, missiles that the plant puts in to prevent you from accessing those nutrients. A lot of those, uh, a lot of those anti nutrients that I mentioned, like in, like tannins or phytic acid, binds to vitamins and minerals, especially minerals, and prevents them from being absorbed. So on paper, you might have some of those minerals, but in reality, you can't absorb them. Another potential reason could be that plant-based diets are so high in carbohydrates. 
for the most part. So very difficult, very hard to do low carb or even zero carb, which is what I would recommend on a plant-based diet. And so um, if you're eating all the carbs, carbohydrates turn into sugar almost very quickly in the body. And uh, so that carbohydrate and those sugars that you're consuming raise overall levels of inflammation, not to mention the high amounts of omega-6 found in plant-based diets. Um, that could also raise inflammation levels. So yeah, another final reason would be uh, the fact that you're getting additional plant self-defense chemicals because there are tons and tons and tons of plant toxins, not just the anti-nutrients, there's so many more. And those cause inflammation. And so when you're eating a carnivore diet, you don't have any inflammation coming from plant self-defense molecules. But in this case, in this study, obviously those people are eating tons of those toxins, right? It's like a slow poison day in and day out. And so eventually it's bound to have an effect. And that's it. Make sure you connect. Um, this is my Instagram and uh, it's at Dr. Sarah Zaldivar, Dr. Sarah Zaldivar. And um, those are the references. They'll always be in the description box below. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell icon so YouTube alerts you every time I post a new video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.